Is it going to try and take the corner or... No, it's not taking the corner. Oh my God. We're on the right hand side of the road. Yeah, it's really not liking this at all. I guess it's using the, the cones to know where it is. Oh my God. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Drive. I hope you're doing very well. It is currently 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. It is pitch black. It's been raining and we've got loads of freezing fog. Let's see how the Tesla autopilot system works on this. So this is 2020.28.6 and we are in the UK on some B roads, I think, or maybe this is an A road. Actually, this is an A road. This is the A4 and we're going to be trying. So you can hopefully see that there's quite a lot of fog in front of us. This is freezing, very low lying fog, uh, which is basically a very heavy cloud load down so it is pretty foggy and we're going to start this off by allowing the car to do its basically do its thing at full speed and we're going to see how well does the car react to the fog at night and at the, um, while it's raining as well this is really really harsh conditions for it and this is going to be a real big test so if you want to see more of this stuff hit the like button down below don't don't forget to subscribe to tesla driver and turn on that notification bell okay let's turn on the sat nav as well so we know where we're going so far in this update there's not been anything huge anything major um it was pretty much just language support however elon has said that he's expecting the next rewrite to come out in six to eight weeks so everybody you've got a highlight october in your calendar this year to be potentially the most exciting or the biggest letdown of a month ever i'm not sure which one it's going to be it depends if elon really does pull through with this and hopefully it is also released at least to us in early access or something across the globe and it's not just stateside uh, obviously when that comes we're going to be doing so many videos we'll be doing daily videos when the huge update comes out and full self-drive really starts to swing into action basically it's now taking stereoscopic images and it's it's like being able to clip them together, merge them together, and create a real 3D render world of the world around it. It should be awesome. I'm expecting the car to brake heavy here. No, it didn't brake for that car on the left. I've got automatic wipers on. I've got automatic lights on. Everything the car is doing on its own right now, guys. This is pretty fast for this corner, I've got to say. Oh, it's braking. There we go. Yeah, so it needed to slow down a little bit before it hit that corner. You can see I actually have it set to 53. So I think the car itself would have gone faster around that corner had I let it. I'm quite glad that it didn't. We've put it back up to 60 now and we'll see what it'll do. We're going to go through the town of Marlborough, which has the widest high street in the world, which is going to be cool. And we'll go through it and see how it reacts to all the cars on the side of the road and all of that kind of good stuff. These roads though, when it's nice and open like this, are definitely no problems at all. One thing I have found though, is that you can see he's full beaming me now, um, because the auto lights on the Tesla really don't react fast enough. Like they should hopefully react faster. And in these kind of climates, again, when it's foggy, as a driver, you can see if someone in front has their lights on by the fog. It basically lights up the fog and lights up the cloud. And hopefully the neural net will learn that and it will be able to actively turn its lights on and off depending on that so it doesn't blind other drivers as well. Actually, that was pretty good. It turned off relatively quickly that time. Sod's law, as soon as I mention it, it does it relatively quickly. So I'm slowing itself. I'm sorry, I'm slowing it down to 30. The only thing I'm taking control of here is the speed of the car because as we saw, it's still not reading gates and it's not slowing itself down before any speed gates. Thank you, 28 miles an hour. That's interesting. So that says I'm going 28, this says I'm going 30. So I guess this is always a couple of miles an hour slower than what you're actually going or at least what the speed camera is going to capture. This is going to be insanely tight for it here it's a really harsh right turn at this speed it's not going to do it is it going to slow itself down it's not slowing itself down okay it is last second and it aborted did you see that it actually fully aborted after it completed that corner which is really strange now i'm keeping my foot on the throttle here we're going to go to this roundabout and see what the car does yeah it just goes straight that was pretty expected but i wasn't expecting for the car to abort earlier that was actually strange it hasn't aborted there before either uh when i've tested this so let's bring this down to 20 and whoa where are we going <laughs> so there again it tried to cut us across the side of the road and it looked like it was taking us onto the wrong side of the road which obviously really wouldn't have been good and this is more uh, more high street so as you can see, it's insanely wide. There's hardly any road markings and the car was struggling to have autopilot turn on. I'm expecting the car to go a little bit crazy here if I'm being honest. Again, it says it's a 30. This is definitely a 20. Yeah, it's really not liking this at all. 
Whoa, where are we going here? Okay, so it's kind of hugging the right where these cones are. Okay, so it's going closer to the cones. Oh my god, we're getting so close to the cones. I guess it's using the the cones to know where it is. Oh my god. Okay, I had to pull it off there because that was actually terrifying. That got so, so close. That was insane. So it, it thought these zebra crossings there. Again, it showed it again there as a traffic light flashing orange, which, it, which is fine, to be honest. It just shows again that it can see it. And again, going 20. Let's come up to this roundabout really slowly. There's no one else on the road, no one in front of us, no one behind us. Gonna bring it to five miles an hour, gonna indicate left, and let's see what the car does. It can see that it definitely can turn left. No, it's going into the right-hand lane there, as you can see, and we're just gonna slowly cross the roundabout there for us, which we didn't want. So again, inside, as soon as we get into a town, as we, as we kind of know previously, it's very, very hit and miss, the autopilot system and at night time it only seems to get worse or it just seems to get harder for the car doing well as we go through here again it still thinks all of that is 30 but now it has just turned to 30 picking up the cones nicely uh, i'll open that up as well so you can see there's just no one around but to be honest so far the fog hasn't been an issue because we haven't seen too much fog being down into the town here but going through the town was pretty appalling and at night time is yeah pretty pretty scary so this here is a, a hard right turn is the car gonna do it or oh, braking hard braking hard very hard yeah it didn't know that there, there was a turn coming there at all and it was braking very hard in the middle of the road to get us around that corner okay into a 60 is it going to change the speed for us automatically still thinks now it says it's 60 not changing the speed for us so i'll just tap the button and change the speed for us there. So through a, through a town at night, not, not good at all. Really not good at all. But that's hopefully something that will be a big improvement in the next update. Whereas on these roads at the moment, this shouldn't be too much of a problem for the car to get to Swindon. Now I know this comes into a 30 in a second, so I'm pulling it all the way down to 30 nice and early and the car's braking, slowing itself down. But again, it's not doing that itself. It would have gone straight through that at 60 and then slammed on about here to go down to 30 which obviously really wouldn't be good and again elon hasn't mentioned in this next update or the next big update the rewrite as he calls it uh is going to include speed kind of orientated stuff he hasn't mentioned it but what he has said is that he was actually driving the new system on his tesla model s and he says it is leaps and bounds people don't understand how much better it is apparently so I'm getting my hopes really, really high here. I'm not gonna lie, like really, really high. Uh, and I, ho I really hope it delivers. Uh, as other cars come past, not a problem for it. Sometimes that would be an issue uh, if it got blinded or anything like that. But as you saw there, no worries at all. And coming out here into a 50, it won't change to 50 itself. I'm gonna have to uh, up the speed to 50. And the reason for that is because I brought the speed down to 30 in a 60 previously so it always goes back to the lowest speed uh, that you set it to again here though i think i'm going to be wanting to go a little bit slower than 50 these are pretty tight corners actually at 50 is doing it's not doing too bad that was that was quite smooth oh it's getting a bit tighter now yeah there you go so again that is our eu limitations coming on right there whenever you hear that boop boop and you see that little warning that is our limitations here on our software version where it can't go a certain speed and corner at the same time it's too many g-forces so it slows us down and brings us around the corner very awkwardly by braking instead of flowing around okay coming out of this 50 into a 60 Again, you see it turned off its lights there because it saw the shine from the, the signs on the side of the road and it thought that that may be a car. Now, what we have on this road as well, which is nice to test, are these. They're pretty much little mounds. There's about five or six little hills. My daughter calls them belly wobbles. When you go over them, you can't see what's past this hill, basically. So right now, you can't see over this at all until you get over it. And then it's like, what's over the other side? Oh, a big, <laughs> a big ass hill again. And previously, well, maybe actually mainly when I was in my Tesla Model X on Hardware 2 2017, I had so many issues where you got to the top, you got to the brow of the hill, 
the car clearly couldn't see where it was going. And it would just do this. Instead of going straight, it would do this until it saw the road and then it would kind of like reconnect. It was almost trying to wobble and connect itself. Whereas now it keeps nice and straight, nice and true and no problems at all. You can also see that the freezing fog, the low lying cloud is also coming over here a little bit. So here, for example, let's see what it's gonna do. Let's see, let's see what it thinks of it. No problem, look at that, completely straight. Honestly, this road previously was terrifying in the Model X because every single one of these brows of hills that when you go over, you can't see, the car would panic at. But that actually did it really, really well. Okay, I'm not gonna touch uh, autopilot for a little bit here, and let's just see how long the limitation is. I'm expecting it to be around 15 seconds. Yeah, there you go. So the uh, first apply slight force came on and then this came on here with about 15 seconds. So nothing has changed on that front. Can you change lanes? There's no one around us. No. Oh, look at that. This actually flashes. Interesting. So I wonder if that blinds the car at all. So when you indicate, I'm going to indicate left. Look at that. It actually really does flash on the camera. I wonder if that blinds it. That's quite interesting. That's just me indicating. And uh, yeah, it definitely does something. Again, another brow here of a hill where the car would have panicked previously. What's it gonna think? No problems, nice and straight. So again here, coming into a 40, I've slowed it down myself. It is really foggy, by the way. I don't know what the camera can see, but it is pretty horrible. It's pretty foggy. You can't see too far ahead of you. But we're now going kind of into Swindon. So this should bring us some different roads here and also hopefully put us on navigate on autopilot for a little bit. Actually, do I have the sat nav on? Yeah, I do. Yeah, this is getting really foggy here. But the car's doing it nicely. It's a it's a really well done road this, so this shouldn't really be a problem for it. Picking up all these bollards as cones as well. Which again, it's good just to see that it can see them. Even though they're not actually cones, they look they look similar enough. They're yellow, I'll give it that. This is really foggy, and the car is doing really well, actually, to see some of these lines. Yeah, this is quite foggy at the top of the hill. And then it clears as we come down. So we're coming into a laned roundabout here that I'm hoping we're going to be able to just complete and do in its entirety. If there's no one coming, this will be perfect timing. Let, let's see... Uh, Oh, we've got some work here as well until summer 2021. Maybe, maybe actually this might be beneficial for us then. All right, bring it down to 15 miles an hour. As we come onto this, there is no cars coming in any direction. Gonna let the car do this. No, there you go. Straight away aborting as soon as you get onto the roundabout now, which is a real shame. And coming up to some traffic lights here, is it going to see them and change? No, there's a car there, so the, the traffic lights aren't going to change. Oh, there, there you go. So I actually saw that car fairly early on uh, as it pulled out there and turned the full beam off itself. And I don't know if other cars would do that. I think a lot of other cars react only to headlights, whereas obviously the Tesla does react to full cars, even if they're kind of on the side. So that was, that was actually pretty good to see. Uh, we have, however, got our full beams on now, though. There we go, they've turned off. Okay, that's not too bad. So, on to navigate on autopilot. I actually don't know where we're coming off here because uh, I can't see my sat nav, so I'm intrigued. It's either gonna pull me off at this one or it's gonna pull me off at the next one. But it's gonna be a nice, uh, a nice surprise, whichever one it is. Is it coming off here? It is coming off here. Okay, there we go. So the car's pulled, oh God, pulled itself off there really pulled itself off at the end as well. I'm not sure what that was about. Now we get your autopilot coming to an end. And as you can see here, the car slowing itself down. Well, only to 55, actually. I thought it was going to go slower than that, but apparently not only to 55. So we'll bring it all the way down. Again, no one behind us, no one around us. This is laned this bit. So this actually might work well for us. It's going to bring it to 20 and then up to 30. Doesn't matter if anyone's coming on the roundabout. This is our own lane. And yeah, that, that did it. It did technically did kind of do a roundabout. I'm not gonna claim that that was a roundabout, but kind of was. And then back onto normal roads. And now these kind of roads in Swindon, I don't really think it should have any issues with, mainly because obviously the roads are well lit. 
and you would hope that they're well enough designed to see be seen easily at night. And we'll just bob along here and see how well it does. But to be honest, I've actually been fairly impressed by it. It's been pretty good at night. These haven't been two testing roads, but to be honest, these are very realistic roads uh, for me. These are roads that kind of I do all the time. So it's nice to know that it can do it all at night, of course. Here again, there is a central reservation, but if I want to cross the lane, sadly, it still won't go into that lane. We're coming up some red lights here. The car is not slowing down for them at all. At all. <laughs> at all. No, it's not slowing down. There we go. It's turned to green. Oh, damn it. I actually wanted to see then if it was going to go through while it thought it was red lights, uh, but the lights didn't change quick enough for us. Again, as we come into this 40, I'll have to slow the car down myself as the car just doesn't doesn't do it just yet. Again, here into a roundabout, we're just going to follow the lane. Let's follow the lane that we're in. Let's see what the car does here. Going to go down to 20 miles an hour for this roundabout. What does the car think of it? It's going to... Yeah, it, it worked and it's taken us to Old Town. Pretty sure this isn't the way the sat-nav wanted us to go, but it again did a roundabout and kept us in lane. Uh, and that was actually that was actually pretty good, but yeah, these wide, oh, these wide roads at night. Whoa, we're going over to the right here, going into this right-hand lane. So we're going to stick in this lane. Again, let's see. Can we can we get ourselves around this roundabout? There's no one on it, no one coming onto it. Here we go, going across, and yeah, look at that. We've actually done it. We've actually done it. We went across a roundabout and we go, we're going to the Marriott. Okay, we're going to the Marriott, apparently. Oh, these could be quite interesting rows. Oh my God. Is it going to try and take the corner or... No, it's not taking the corner. Oh my God. Where are we going? We're on the right-hand side of the road. Uh, okay, that was, that was unexpected to say the least. It actually, it took a junction and just kind of went with it. I, I'm not expecting there to be any difference at night with parking, but it's not seeming to pick anything up. There's definitely a space. Okay, there we go. So let's find a space. Let's go. Auto park into this space at night, and then we'll head on over to the magic roundabout. So again here, like I said, I really like the auto parking on it at the moment, <laughs> especially pa uh, parallel parking like this. Oh, you see that van in front of me? That van in front of me has had its, this is a big problem here. We've had a few of them recently where people come with a crowbar and basically open the side up of these um, of these slidable vans. And I'll show you because this van has had that exactly done to it. But look how well that's worked. He's got a huge fly sticker on the back. That's really strange. That's worked really well. And it's got us into our spot perfectly. So, so look at this. If I just reverse back, you see how the top of that van has got that open. Someone has basically jammed a crowbar in and tried to open it up uh, and tried to take whatever whatever is in the van. It's a big issue around here and um, yeah, interesting to actually see a van with the, with the sides taken off like that. So there we are everybody. There is the Tesla Model 3 at 5 a.m. at night and uh, going through through a town. I'm going to head myself over now to the Magic Roundabout and give it a give it a quick whirl on autopilot and let's see what happens, shall we? Hopefully you'll join me for that video. It should be coming out tomorrow. Until then, thank you for watching and don't forget, drive safe.